These videos are going to go through the ideas that are important for non-uniform circular motion, so this is to distinguish it from what we've already talked about with uniform circular motion, and some of the ideas we're talking about here then are just extensions of that, a very few of them are completely new. So largely we're going to be working towards some equations and also some directional components of the acceleration vector. So because of this, this is really tied to problem solving, the ability to do these calculations, take information given to you, and know what variables it connects to. So first is just the idea of angular acceleration, which is alpha. And so ideally you have uh, some way of writing alpha that it looks different than a. So the, dis uh, the distinction between a, lowercase a, and alpha is very important. There are going to be many situations where you're using both. So if you're not used to writing Greek letters, I highly recommend that you practice writing alpha so that it doesn't look like your letter a. Uh, that will be both good for you and good for whoever is looking at your work, i.e. me. So the idea of alpha is that it is our change in the angular velocity. So remember that omega was our angular velocity, and so this is d omega dt, and this is completely analogous, analogies is going to be the, the theme of this video, to linear acceleration being the time derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we can make this, for instance, a explicitly one-dimensional situation, just like when we're dealing with rotation here, we don't have to worry about multiple components. There's only really one rotation we're worrying about. So we have actually talked about this already, but it was just in the situation of talking about uniform circular motion, saying that alpha was equal to zero. So possibly you've seen this before, but we just said that omega wasn't changing with time. Our angular velocity used to be constant, if we're talking about constant angular motion. So now we're talking about non-uniform circular motion, so this is changing. So what we need to think about now are some uh, directions. So again, the default is that a positive direction of our angular velocity is to the left. And so what these four situations are going to talk us through is that our initial angular velocity is on the top, and our final angular velocity is on the bottom. So this is just one way of trying to show two different sized, they're not really vectors because they're curves, but just trying to show you the change. So initially we're moving, it looks like, to the left, but remember how we would call this is counterclockwise. So this has a positive sign, it's greater than zero, because it is counterclockwise, opposite the direction of a clock. So omega is positive and it is speeding up. So our omega is increasing, and it's already positive, so that means alpha is also greater than zero. Now, if we also have it, still our omega is greater than zero, our angular velocity is counterclockwise, but it's slowing down, that means that your angular acceleration is going in the opposite direction. Now what's tricky is, again, I can't really draw vectors here because these aren't things that only have one direction. These are rotational. So I can't draw per se a vector, but if omega was positive and it's getting smaller, then alpha must be negative. Now, we can flip the direction. If our rotation is originally clockwise, the same direction that the hands on the clock travel, then that actually means that our omega is negative. Since typically, remember what we say is that the positive x hat direction and whatever opening angle we have, that this is theta. And so if our theta is decreasing, we would call that negative. So that's what's happening here. But if we see that it is slowing down, right? So it's going to clockwise, but we see that it ends up slower than it started. That means that alpha, our acceleration, is positive. It's in the opposite direction. Finally, if we're going clockwise but we are getting faster, then both our omega and our alpha are both negative. So this is very analogous to when we talked about a velocity and acceleration in just x or y direction. Same situation. Slowing down means your signs are opposite. Speeding up means your signs are the same. So be careful 
uh, don't just say decelerating or accelerating and have that imply what your signs are, since there is somewhat a directionality here, but not so much we can draw a vector. So now let's talk about what this is going to look like on a plot. And in this case, our plot is angular velocity versus time. So initially, we have our angular velocity looking like a line. And what that means is that we have a constant angular acceleration, because this has a uniform slope. And since our change in omega is equal to alpha, straight line like this means that we have a constant change. In this region, our omega, our angular velocity, is not changing. It's constant, which means that our angular acceleration alpha is also zero. So it's constant, but in particular, it's zero since we don't have a change. Finally, here we have, again, a straight line, so we know that it's going to be constant. And note that the slope is negative, so we have a negative alpha. We have a negative angular acceleration. And this also goes back to the signs agreeing, because before we said that if it's slowing down, which this is, it's going from some angular speed to zero. So it's slowing down, but right now our angular velocity is positive. So if, it's pos if angular velocity is positive and it's slowing down, then we must have a negative angular acceleration, which is what we have. So uh, this, these, this specific plot here is showing you a constant acceleration model, right? So we can break each of these pieces up and we can treat it with some simplified kinematics equations. Otherwise, you need to use calculus. And this is, again, just like the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration, because the slope of our theta versus t plot was giving us angular velocity. The slope of our angular velocity versus t plot is giving us angular acceleration. So you really get to basically just make a uh, translation, if you will, from your linear, so translational component, uh, sorry, variables, to your new uh, angular variables. And this is true in this case for analyzing our uh, plots, and it's also going to be true in the equations themselves. So you knew how to analyze plots like this for position, velocity, and acceleration when they were your linear direction. The same rules are going to apply now that they're angular. This brings us to our model, specifically the constant angular acceleration model. And again, a few chapters ago, we covered the constant acceleration model. And this is like the same thing, but we've added angular everywhere. So the idea being that we have an, an object that is rotating, or it's a point particle with a circular trajectory. Again, you can think of this as, say, a bug on a record player or a rock on a string. And something is rotating. However, now we're saying that it can have an angular acceleration. So before, when we talked about uniform circular motion, uniform circular motion did not have an angular acceleration. Now we do. So we can again make plots of theta, our angular position, omega, which is our angular velocity, and alpha, which is our angular acceleration. Now what we get to do is create these nice equations that we had before for the linear uh, system. So before we could relate position, velocity, and acceleration with time, this was again only true for constant acceleration. And now all you do is literally take A and make it alpha, take V and make it omega, take uh, S, because this was either X or Y, a generalized position, and make that theta, and boom, there you go, you have your new equations. So we're not going to spend much more time on this because all of the techniques that you learned about for dealing with uh, kinematics in the case of constant acceleration in X and Y, those same tools are going to apply now.